Good morning and welcome to today's Kativ Autodesk Virtual Academy session. Uh, our once a week learning sessions here all about Autodesk products, uh, anything and everything to do with them actually. Um, as usual, I'm Nigel and Bayek here um, in the lovely uh, Kativ offices and training center in Brea, California. So uh, I'd like to thank you all for being here today. We're at nearly, we're at just about 2,000 subscribers now, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, and it's uh, without you, you know, we wouldn't be able to keep doing these things every week. So definitely uh, keep supporting AVA and uh, keep giving us your uh, suggested topics, and we'll uh, get to those as soon as possible. So uh, without further ado, uh, we'll jump into today's topic. So uh, PDF import. Uh, this is actually my favorite new addition into AutoCAD 2017. Um, many times, you know, someone would go ahead and send me a drawing um, that was exported as a PDF. And uh, you know there might be a spelling mistake in there, or maybe there was a dimension that was missing, or a dimension that was even wrong. To fix that, you know, you'd either have to go in there and like kind of manipulate the PDF via some like photo editing software um, if you convert it to raster, or you need to ask for that original drawing file um, so you can edit it yourself. Sometimes that's not possible; for, you can't reach the person who originally made it, um, or you know the file got lost somewhere. Um, maybe you're opening a PDF that was created you know, five, six years ago, and uh, now you can't find it anymore. So uh, Autodesk has included uh, something new in 2017, AutoCAD, um, and, and all of its verticals. So just AutoCAD, uh, mechanical, architecture, electrical, the entire lot all have this feature. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, jump in here. So uh, first of all, um, I asked the question, what is it? Um, also, um, in regards to questions, if you do have any at any time, go ahead and type them into your panel over there um, on your screen, and I'll make sure to address those during the presentation or afterwards. Um, I'll definitely monitor that panel as we go along here. So what is a PDF import? So um, most drawing files, I don't know about everyone else, but for me and a couple of my colleagues here, for the most part, when we send drawings to each other um, as like a uh, finalized products, they get sent as PDFs, um, not necessarily, you know, IDWs or uh, DWGs, DWF files that you can uh, freely edit. Um, but sometimes you need to make changes to those or, you know, you need to um, look at those in a more CAD environment. Um, in that sense, you know, you need to bring that into your CAD tool. So, um, just a little bit of history on PDFs. Um, in 2007 AutoCAD, uh, you could print a PDF. Um, that functionality existed in the box. Before this, you had to install you know, third-party add-ins um, that would let you set PDF as a plotter. You would install other programs to get your AutoCAD to print to PDF. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I've never not had that functionality. Maybe just kind of, I'm still pretty young. But, uh, <laughs> but I couldn't imagine you know, having to actually plot this thing to a printer than having to scan it in regards to getting uh, something you can send that way. Um, so in AutoCAD 2010, they added the functionality to attach a PDF as an underlay in your drawing. So I guess this was like the beginning of what they have now. Um, you could attach a PDF. Um, it would go underneath your workspace. Um, so a lot of times if people needed to recreate something, um, they would attach the PDF as an underlay and then they'd use that as a scale to you know, trace um, and edit a couple of features in that particular file. With uh, AutoCAD 2017, um, they introduced PDF import into AutoCAD as geometry um, and text that you can edit. And I'll, I'll show that here in a little bit. But uh, this was one of the most requested features of AutoCAD. A lot of people had issues with, um, with these PDF files. They wanted to bring them in as geometry that they could edit, that they could delete, um, that they could add to. Um, and you know, this has been one of the highest requested things um, to the Autodesk team. Uh, they've actually had a preview of it at, uh, at AU in 2015. Um, and you know they just asked this simple question here to uh, everyone who was there. Um, and the question was, you know, will you use the PDF import feature if it were to be out? So what they did is they previewed this feature, they showed a little demo, and then they asked everyone, hey, will you use it? And as you can see, nearly 95% of people said, hey, you know, this is something I can use. Um, even, you know, upwards of 75% of people are like, yes, like strongly yes um, to using this PDF feature. So uh, without further ado, I'll uh, jump into this. And then, um, you know, if, if this is still a little confusing as to, you know, why you need this feature, 
Um, I'll give you a couple of scenarios here in which uh, this feature really speeds up things. So let me jump into my AutoCAD here real quick. So this right here is a, uh, a drawing. This is not the drawing. This is a PDF underlay. This is just attached to the drawing file. Um, so I actually can't go ahead and edit this. This is just a, a single PDF here. Um, so if you look in your insert tab in AutoCAD 2017, something got added here, and it's this PDF import function. So what this does is it allows you to change some of this stuff into geometry. Um, as you can see here, if you go here, um, there's no layer information. There's nothing there um, in regards to bringing any of this in. But since this PDF is vector data, not raster data, I'll go over the differences uh, between those two in a little bit. Um, it'll pull it in as geometry and text when possible. So um, in regards to getting this into, um, into your actual drawing file so you can edit some of these lines here, uh, you're going to want to go to insert, PDF import, or you can just type PDF import into your command line. Um, it'll do the same thing. When you select PDF import, it'll ask you to select an underlay or a file. So you don't have to have it attached to your file to bring it in. So um, I'm just going to select this underlay right here. And it's going to let me select an area um, or select all. And then there's a couple of settings here in regards to bringing some stuff in. Let me bring this up here. So this is the, the PDF import settings. Um, you can select the data import um, if you want to bring in true type text, raster images, uh, solid fills. Um, it changes these sometimes to hatches when applicable, um, and vector geometry. Um, this is just the standard, what it comes in as. Um, really importantly, when I was learning how to use this, um, I had this box checked, and it's import as block. If you have this box checked, everything you import will come in as a single block. I just thought it would come in as, you know, multiple blocks, but I guess it's not plural for a reason. Um, so just note, if you're having issues um, and you're not getting the, the desired results, um, uncheck this box, or check if it's even... Um, there in the first place. If you select options here, it's going to show you, let's see, it's going to show you where it's going to store some of these raster images. Um, so just make sure this is applicable to your workflow um, when, when you have raster images. In this case, we don't have any. Um, so what I'll do here is I'll just select this area right here. I just want this um, particular view. And then it's going to give me the option to keep, detach, or unload the PDF underlay. Um, so like I said, this is a PDF underlay of this file. Um, you can keep it or detach it or unload it. Um, in this case, I'm going to detach it. So the only thing that's going to be left is that area I selected. Um, and it's going to think for a second. Um, when you have just a few lines um, like this, it doesn't take very long to get done. So if you look here over properties, this is showing up here as a polyline. Um, so this, you, know, you can go ahead and freely edit this. You can delete it. Um, Etc. The really cool thing here is it keeps the layer information. So if you go ahead and check into these layers here, you can, you know, if you want to turn off the dimensioning, say you didn't want to see that, you can turn that off. Um, and, you know, say you just wanted the geometry, good to go here. Um, you know, all of the normal AutoCAD functionality exists here. Um, if you wanted to, say, you know, draw more lines onto this, it'll still snap to corners, it'll snap to endpoints. Um, it'll snap to midpoints if you have that set on. I don't personally right now. Um, and then you can even, you know, go ahead and freely delete stuff that you don't need. Um, edit it, et cetera, et cetera. Really cool. Um, say, for example, you need to make this line longer or you needed to change the angle of this particular segment. You can do so um, after you import it as PDF. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And um, so there's a second way to import PDFs here. And that would be from the file. So if you select PDF, PDF import from file, um, this window will pop up here. And um, it'll only well, obviously allow you to select PDFs here. And uh, let's pick one with multiple sheets. Um, this one has multiple sheets. I know it's like more of an AAC file type, and I know a lot of people here are manufacturing customers, but um, it's still applicable. I just want to show you what happens when you have multiple sheets. So this PDF has four sheets. Um, you can bring in one at a time, and in this case, you know, I want to bring sheet three in, and I want to edit some text here. Um, 
same thing. Uh, this is the same options box that we had before. I can change the scaling or I can change the insertion point. Um, I'm actually going to scale into 50. And I'm going to bring this guy in. Um, it's going to show me what page size is going to bring in and scale the PDF um, from original. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, it's going to take a while. It's converting, you know, multiple thousands of elements in polylines. Um, it's going to look at those solids there and then convert them to hashes when applicable. Um, and it's going to bring in those raster images as well. So it's going to take a little bit here. All right, looks like we've got our file. Um, what's going on here? Looks a little funky. But anyways, um, when you have things like SHX text, um, like this dimension right here, it's going to come in. Oops, sec, whoops. They're going to come in as polylines, um, just because it's not understanding that SHX text as editable text. It's just thinking of it as geometry. So these zeros are actually going to show as ellipses. Um, but when you get to something like this, you know, you can edit this text if it's showing up as um, some true type text in, um, in AutoCAD. So say I wanted to make this to Nigel's plan just because. Um, and it'll go ahead and edit that. You can go ahead and save this down. You can export it as PDF um, as you wish. So let's come up with some. There are a couple of like real life examples of why you'd want to do this. Um, and I'll show you one right now. Let me just erase this guy here. So let's open this. Right here, I have uh, a PDF that you know my good friend uh, Eric Paul sent me. Um, and you know Eric Paul doesn't know how to spell, so instead of uh, front elevation, he put runt escalation. Um, sometimes these PDFs are locked; you can't edit them um, in things like Adobe. Um, I'm just using this as a reader right now, but uh, say this here, um, you could bring into AutoCAD, use the true type text function to change this to um, the desired values. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just type in the command line here, PDF import, and I'm going to go to file. Whoops, can't spell. Um, and that's this PDF particular layer here. I'll bring this guy in. Um, let's make the scale 40. Um, and all of this is fine. So if we don't want to bring in this raster image, there's a raster image in this actually. And it's in this block over here. It's just a logo. Um, let's uh, not turn this on and this should not be here. And we'll bring this in. It's converting you know, thousands of elements here. And some polylines. And we should get the geometry here in a little bit. Um, obviously, the more complex the PDF, the longer this is going to take. Um, and yeah, pretty much. So we'll just wait here. Everything's brought up. And I want to edit this text right here. So let's go ahead and select it. No, come on, buddy. There we go. Now I want to change this to front elevation. I can go ahead and do that. And it'll save down. Um, I can go ahead and, you know, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and export this to PDF, um, and I'll get the same kind of file out um, as there was before. Um, you can do that, but like I noted earlier, things like this are going to show up as ellipses, and these are going to show up as, like, polylines, um, just because this is SHX text. Um, things like raster images are not going to show up properly, um, just because the raster images, as you can see, there was this raster image logo that's now gone. Um, that's because I obviously unselected that part. I'll show you now what happens when you try to bring in something that's a raster image. Um, so let's go ahead and just select all and erase this. We'll do the same thing here. We'll uh, PDF import, file, and uh, you know we're going to bring up the Kativ AVA logo, which is really... I'll, uh, I'll actually open that in a file so we can see what it looks like. One second here. Let me pull this up. And... Perfect. All right, so this is what the... This is the image that I'm bringing in. This is raster data. Um, so the way the raster data is... Um, created is a little bit different than vector data. Uh, vector data is like, this is more, raster data is more like a grid 
um, in terms of like you know there's millions upon millions of little dots here and each dot is representative of color. Vector data is a little bit differently different. Um, vector obviously kind of like line data. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and bring that in and we'll see that it's not going to show up properly. Um, we'll bring in raster images obviously because this is a raster image um, and we're going to use PDF layers uh, as so. We can bring it in as multiple. That's fine. So we'll go ahead and bring this guy in and as you can see it doesn't bring it in properly just because it's a uh, it's a raster image. So you'll get the same kind of problem here when you bring in things like scanned images. So say for example you had um, you had a PDF and say you know one of your colleagues printed this five years ago um, and you scanned it into you know your normal old scanner and you have it as saved as a PDF on your machine. If you do bring that data in, um, scanned items like that aren't going to show up as vector data. It's going to show up as raster data. Um, so you're going to get you won't get the geometry that you can edit, you won't get true type text you can edit, um, it'll show up as just like an image as a PNG file um, pretty much on your computer. If you wanted to edit that and say make that raster data into vector data, you can use um, you can use raster design if you already have that program on your machine. Um, a lot of the design suites already have it included, um, so that's one thing. Um, and then there's other tools in regards to getting that vector raster data into vector data. Um, so you can go around it. So let's keep going here. Um, I think that's it for my demonstration, but um, there is a question that came up the last time I did this demo about security. And obviously security is really important. Um, let me bring up my AutoCAD again. Um, say for example, I'll just bring in something real quick. So security for your PDFs, um, because inherently, you know, you're able to import PDFs now, um, you know, someone could import your PDF and say, for example, change your title block here. So what happens if, well, this isn't in English, but like say, for example, this was someone's name, um, or I think, or I guess this isn't the best example, but um, say, for example, you had somebody's name here in the title block um, and you know, someone you didn't want got access to your particular PDF and went in and changed the name to themselves. That is possible with the PDF import function. So I guess it's just nature of the beast here um, that, you know, things like that are possible. It's very dangerous for sure. Um, and I definitely understand um, that that could be a problem for some people, especially if it's very um, sensitive data, um, maybe even, you know, um, government contracted data or you know, just uh, something like that in general. There are ways to get around that. Um, a lot of times when you have proprietary data like that, a lot of people tend to put um, large watermarks on their images. Another thing is um, you can lock PDFs um, using some Adobe software. There's a way to lock it. Um, it doesn't necessarily stop this from happening. Um, but definitely take all the precautions that you can in regards to keeping your proprietary data yours. Um, make sure you know who you're sending these files to. Things like A360, which is now being rebranded as, excuse me, BIM360 Team and Fusion Team. I think it's Fusion Team. Um, you know, you, you can set access to certain files um, to certain people. You know, you can set, you know, this particular drawing to um, whoever has the link can view only. Not, they can't edit or they can't download. Um, and that makes it a little bit easier, but you know, if someone really wanted it, I guess they could always screenshot it and import it as, or change the raster data to vector data, import it that way. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and jump into a and a here. I know there's a couple of questions already in the queue, and I'll just start addressing them. Um, so if you do have any questions, feel free to type them in. I'll cover a couple right now. So AJ asked a question at the beginning, um, or kind of closer to the beginning of the presentation here. Um, the, PDF, the PDFs used as examples uh, look like they are created direct from AutoCAD, will this work if it were a scanned PDF? Um, so no, it won't work the same way where you have geometry, uh, as I noted before. Those came in as raster data um, from scanned PDFs. You can always convert that raster data into vector data and bring it in the same way, then it'll work the same way. Um, those, the PDFs that were there were created in AutoCAD and its verticals. Um, you can do the same thing with PDFs created from Inventor. So I have one um, somewhere here and I'll bring that in really quick. Um, and I'll show you it works the same exact way. And 
this. So this came from my friend Rich Sanchez. This, is ID, this was originally an IDW file um, that he sent to me as a PDF, um, and you can bring this in as well. Um, this comes in. Um, as you can see here, some of the hatches don't come in uh, the same. Um, there's just you know some issues in that sense. Um, I guess it wasn't a solid. I don't know how this was created in Inventor, but um, as you can see, you can bring in Inventor files the same way. Um, you can edit text. You can. I don't know if it's got layer data. I don't think it does. Oh, it does. Okay. Um, so yeah, it does have layer data. You can turn off certain layers. Um, bring up things you want. Uh, you can still edit um, text here if it's uh, true type text, not if it's SHA text, like I mentioned. Um, so yes, you can do it. Um, let's see, there's a couple more questions here. Actually, there's a lot of questions. I'll start taking care of these. Um, let's see. So even printed PDF files will come in as raster as opposed to exported PDF. Printed two PDF files. So no, if you printed two PDFs um, in either Inventor um, or AutoCAD or even some of the other um, other programs, I think you can do it in Revit as well. Um, they won't come in as raster data; they'll come as vector data. That's just how it's written in those programs. Let me turn my, my camera on so you guys can see me. Um, that'll come in as vector data. So I guess a lot of questions are, you know, does this only work for files that are created in AutoCAD? No, it works for all PDFs um, if it's vector data. Raster data, obviously, you're going to have to convert that. Um, and people are asking, how do I convert raster to vector data? Um, we can go over that later in another session here. I don't have time to do that today, but there are some. You can do some of that stuff in raster design. There's other programs to do it as well. There might be some, um, some free web tools that you can convert um, raster data into vector data. So this actually changes how the file is built, as opposed to being a grid. It's just lines. Um, let's see. And uh, yeah, it looks like a lot of people are asking how to convert raster into vector data. Um, you know, if there's this many requests, um, I'll take that into account, and you know, maybe we'll do a follow-up session to this, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Um, to take you know your old legacy data that you know, like here, oh, here's plans of uh, this part that was designed in mechanical desktop, and I have a PDF of it that was scanned, or that was printed and then was scanned. In some sense, um, bringing that in, we'll do we'll do something like that. And uh, let's see here. Is this available in AutoCAD LT? Yes. So this is available in AutoCAD LT for those of you who do have LT. This is included in LT as well as all of the AutoCAD verticals. Um, let's go ahead and look at something else in regards to um, other. Autodesk offerings as well. Um, there is. We're in August now, and if you've been following some Kativ webcasts for quite some time now, um, you'll know that you can't get suites anymore. So um, what you do get now is these industry collections, which I think are really amazing. You get so much um, value for your dollar. It's never been so much software packed into the same place at the price point that this is. Um, and so, you know, we decided, hey, let's uh, let our customers know what's in here, um, what differences it has to the software they already have. I know a lot of people on this call already have things like product design suite um, or um, maybe even building design suite. There are, you know, two major industry collections for the manufacturing and AEC group of people. I mean, you don't have to pick anymore between plant design suite, building design suite, infrastructure design suite, product design suite. There's like seven or eight of them. And then you have to pick between the tiers of each. You only have two choices here. You've got AEC, uh, industry collection, uh, product manufacturing, industry collection, and they include everything. Um, and it's actually about the same price as an individual suite. So you're getting extra bonuses, I guess. Um, so we're going to go over what the industry collections include. And um, right now that there's a... Uh, there's a promo for a 50% discount. Um, we'll show you the qualifications for that 50% discount um, for these uh, industry collections if you are interested in something like that. Um, myself and Ori will be on that next week. Um, if you want to sign up, I'll go ahead and copy this guy into the chat box. Um, note that this is not the same as an AVA, so you're going to have to sign up um, separately for this than 
the ABA next week, you automatically will not get that invitation, you know, that two-hour reminder on um, Friday morning. So it uh, looks like a couple more questions came in while I was explaining this. Um, yeah, so a lot of people are telling me that it is um, aliasing that's giving me those extra lines. It totally is. Um, if you're having that same problem, you can go into 3D config um, and turn your hardware acceleration off, um, and it should not give you those lines. It's just um, issues with your GPU, and it's not giving you um, everything properly. Um, it's adding those extra lines, especially when you move quickly around. It could be like ghosting. You could have like weird trails and stuff. Um, that does happen when your GPU is not scaling everything properly. Um, I actually did change a couple of things with my driver here, and that gave me that. Um, so just make sure you're on a certified driver. If you have any questions about that, um, let us at Lifeline. Let us here at Lifeline know. Um, we can help you figure out which is certified driver that you have. Um, in regards to that, I know that that is one of the most requested um, things at support. Is like, hey, you know, my graphics aren't working properly. How do I fix that? So um, with that, I think we're good here on questions. There's a couple of um, deeper questions here um, that I'll go ahead and table and um, answer offline here. Um, they're going to be a little more complicated. So I'll get back to you if I haven't gotten back to your question. Um, again, after this survey or after this webcast, you will be receiving a survey. It's like three questions. Um, it would be really awesome if you could answer that. We definitely take all of those requests. Um, and responses into account when scheduling the next couple of ABA sessions here. Uh, if you want to see something, like say for example, you know, converting this raster data into vector data, like I see, you know, half a dozen questions here about, um, please make a note of that, and then we'll take it into account, and we'll schedule accordingly. Um, the more we hear about a particular topic, the higher we'll put it on the priority list, and the sooner it'll come out. So um, with that, um, I'll let you know that, you know. If you do want to keep up with things, um, Kativ, we do have uh, every major social media outlet um, available to us. So if you do want to keep up, um, go ahead and follow us on one of these things. You stay connected. We do share some customer stories as well. If you want to share something about your company, let us know. We can definitely uh, retweet, repost that for you. And um, as usual, this session is being recorded right now. So hello recording in the future. <laughs> And uh, you can watch this on YouTube at any point in time that you want. And that website is youtube.com slash Kativ Technologies, or you can just search Kativ on the YouTube channel, or on the YouTube, and um, you'll be able to find our channel that way. So with that, I think we're done for today. And uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming here. Uh, make sure you uh, fill out that survey at the end. You know, very helpful to me in regards to planning. And uh, we'll see you next week for Inventor Styles done by... Uh, that's being presented by my colleague, Daniel Huang. Um, but you'll probably see me there as well. So uh, with that, I'll leave you guys. And uh, adios. See you next week.